In today's video, we're going to be checking out this higher-end, high-performance, dual-motor electric scooter. This is one type of product that I've never shown on my channel. Hopefully, it tests well. This was sent to me by the company, but as always, you can expect a fair and honest review. And as you can see, my cat is already getting started on opening the box. handlebar, got the keys. Let me take this out of the box very carefully because it is kind of wedged in here with the styrofoam. Once it's all out, I'll place it on the carpet so we can take a closer look at the entire scooter. And here it is out of the box, the Varla Eagle One, and I must say it is very cool looking. What really surprised me is the length of this scooter from the front of this tire to the rear is right around 51 inches or 1.3 meters. As you can see, when the scooter is removed from the box, it's about 95% assembled already. You only have to connect up the handlebars. We're going to be doing that in a minute. And right over here, when you put the handle up, it lets you lock it in position. And when you're going to travel, you can fold it back down and you can release it with these clamps. Also included with the scooter is the owner's manual. Both of these tires are 10 inch pneumatic tires. So also included is a spare inner tube. Over here is your AC charger or switch mode power supply and it's 58 volts or 58.8 with an output of 2 amps. You can see the connector right over here and it plugs right over here on the side of the scooter. You also get this very handy tool, folds up, you have multiple Allen keys, Allen wrenches. On this side you have slot screwdriver. Phillips screwdriver, quarter drive uh, sockets, you have them right over here, they'll plug right onto the end of that connection, and you also have this other wrench. You also get four of these rubber caps, very thick, goes on the nut on each side of the front wheel and the back wheel. You can see the deck on this electric scooter has this non-skid skull design on it. And it's just like any other non-skid tape that you would use on a boat or a ladder. The company also gives you three more. So if you wear that one out, you have this one, that one, and this one. Very cool. Before I go over all the features the scooter has and take it for a test drive, let me give you a quick look around it. Then I'm going to show you how to lock the pole in position and connect up the handlebars. And here's a quick look around the electric scooter and in case you're wondering, the frame is 6061 aluminum alloy. So the first thing we're going to do is lift up on this pole, hold the handlebars, make sure it goes all the way to the point where it does not go forward. You want to take this collar right here, slide it down, but you want to make sure it goes all the way to this nut, and then you want to push down and wiggle, let's see, try not to block the camera too much, there it goes, and you can see it's fully seated, hopefully, right over here. Now what you want to do here is make sure these clamps are getting tension at the same spot. So that one's getting it there. This one's getting it a little bit further this way. So loosen it a hair. And the reason why you want to do this, you don't want one being tight here and one being tight there. It's going to be uneven. So just make sure they match up. When they do, just push it all the way until it locks. Push it down. Do the same thing here. Now you're good to go. After riding the scooter for a while, you always want to make sure that the sleeve did not move upward because the clamps were not tight enough. So just take a look at the spacing right over here. Again, you want to make sure just by glancing at it that there is no space. If there's a space, that means it's slowly moving up. You do not want to have that happen because if you're riding the scooter 
and all of a sudden this handlebar should happen to tilt towards you, you can lose control and get hurt. So always double check this area right here after riding the scooter for a long time. Push them both back. Now the handlebars. In order to mount the handlebars, you're going to have to remove all four of these bolts using the multi-tool with the Allen key you see here in the center. You're going to very carefully lift up the handlebars and you're going to see there's a knurled area on the handlebars. You want to make sure it lines up directly in the center of that bracket. Place this back on top. Tighten by hand first to make sure you don't cross thread anything. Then you're going to tighten the handlebars in a position that's comfortable for you. The next step, you're going to have to take the brake lever, the switches, this bell, battery voltage meter, throttle, as well as the brake lever, and you're going to have to make sure they're in the correct positions that are comfortable for you, and you're going to tighten everything down securely. Now for me, this is perfect. And I can reach up like this for the throttle. Right here you can see you have two keys, and it goes right over here. This electric scooter is powered by a 52 volt, 18 amp hour, lithium ion battery pack. It's located inside the deck. Over here you have two ports that you can connect to to charge. The reason for that, using one charger it's going to take about 9 hours to fully charge this scooter when it's been fully depleted. If you have two chargers it'll charge twice as fast, 4.5 to 5 hours. The maximum weight capacity for this scooter is 330 pounds. The manufacturer recommends keeping it well below 300. You can also see that the scooter has front and rear suspension. And having that suspension is going to make a huge difference if you hit small dips in the road or little bumps. The scooter also has front and rear hydraulic brakes. You can see that it's disc and it has anti-lock brakes. Inside the front wheel and back wheel, there's a 1000 watt dual hub motor and it's controlled by a 25 amp speed controller. Maximum speed for the scooter is right around 40 miles an hour, which is incredibly fast. So you got to be very careful. There are three speed settings. Speed setting one is up to 15 miles per hour. Speed setting two up to 25. And speed setting three is the highest at 40. When the scooter is fully charged, you can go up to 40 miles. That's incredible distance to be traveling on a scooter. With these powerful dual hub motors, you can climb 30 degree inclines. Also very nice to have the front and rear fenders. To make the scooter much safer for night riding, there are headlights. One here, one on the opposite side, and you also have tail lights. And on the opposite side of the rear wheel, you can see the kickstand. The scooter appears to be very well made and the pneumatic tire has a maximum pressure rating of 50 PSI. Let's take the key, turn on the scooter, and take a look at the display. 54.2 volts. Now get push and hold here. Right here you can see gear one, that's the lowest speed. Push mode, gear two, gear three is the fastest. Speed and performance is going to be directly affected by the position of these switches. You do not want to play with these switches while you're riding. You want to make sure you stop, make your changes, and then continue to ride. When the buttons are pressed in, it's going to be the top that's selected. When the buttons are out, it's going to be the bottom. So right now we're Eco, single motor. That's going to give you the longest range on this scooter. You can also use Eco and Dual. And if you want a lot of power, put it to turbo. Turning on the headlights and taillights is very simple. Push and hold mode for three seconds. And then you can see them turn on. Push and hold for three seconds to turn them off. I highly recommend when you start using this to make it go to 
the maximum of 15 miles per hour. Make sure you have all your safety gear on, helmet, knee pads, elbow pads. You do not want to get hurt. Never go fast in an area that you have not traveled before. Switching from kilometers per hour to miles per hour is very simple. Let's turn it back on again. You want to go into a different menu. You're going to push power and mode together. Okay. Now you can go to different settings. That's different brightnesses for the screen. So we'll put it on two, select kilometers, mile, select. Once you switch the setting to miles, you let go of the button. And after a few seconds, it'll go back to the screen where it says miles. When you're in that settings menu, there are also many other settings. I'm going to go over them with you very quickly. Over here, P1, LCD brightness, one is low, three is high, default is three. Speedometer units, that's what we changed from kilometers per hour to miles per hour. P3 is battery voltage, and they do not want you adjusting it. You can see the settings over here. Auto off time for this one. This one is not used, P5. P6 is your wheel diameter setting. You do not change that, it's going to affect your speedometer. Motor magnets, default is 28, leave that alone. Power level, slowest is one, and the fastest is 100. Start mode, you can use the electric off the line, or you can kick to start. P10 is unused, P11 is regenerative braking, or electronic brake strength. And you can see zero is off, one is weak, five is max, default is three. So as you're slowing down and braking, you're going to be charging your battery pack. That's very good. Acceleration is set right in the middle. P13, P14 are unused. P15, automatic scooter voltage shutdown, preset at 42. Over here you have lifetime odometer reset. You can reset that if you desire. P17 is cruise control. It's set for zero, which is default, which is off. One is on. P18 and 19 are unused. And P20 is a communication protocol, default four. Over here's the warranty schedule. You can see the highly wearable parts are only for about a month, like the tires and fenders, something that you can damage. But the rest of it's warrantied between one year and two years. Now let me connect up the charger and we'll take a look at the display. The little notch on the bottom of the connector is going to face down. You can see the voltage climbing now with the charger connected and the light on the switch mode power supply or charging brick is illuminated. It's red. Let's take this out on the road and see how it runs. Okay guys, I'm at a safe area to test this scooter out and I have a friend of mine's son, Jake. Say hi Jake. <laughs> We're going to test it out and let him go first. Now when you turn on the switch right here, the ignition key, it's very hard to see but it, because of the sun glaring on it. But it's 58.9 volts. When I fully charge the scooter, the red LED on the charging brick turns to green. So you'll know exactly when the scooter is fully charged. Push this and hold. And it's on gear one. Over here you have the Eco Turbo switch. In is Eco, out is Turbo. In is single and out is dual motor. So we're gonna leave it on single and Eco. The bell, pretty loud. I would have liked to have seen an electronic device here. They could just push a button and have a loud siren rather than a bell, especially on a scooter of this quality. Okay, you ready to go? Yeah. All right. Kick stand up. Now you're gonna accelerate really slow with that, very slow. Your left is the rear and the right is the front. All right, what do you think? It's fast. And you're only on number one. Got some <laughs> now, do the same thing again. Now push turbo.
in a minute I'm going to be putting the camera on my helmet and taking you guys for a ride. Just wanted to get his impression of the scooter and compare it to mine so you have two opinions. Did it take off faster on the turbo? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give it a try now and Jake's going to have a radar gun in his hand. We're going to compare the reading on the Varla to the reading on the radar gun. I'm on Eco Single. How fast did you show? I was up to 15. Showed up to 15. Good. I tell you, it's it's fun. It's, it handles smooth. The steering feel, feels a little notchy until yeah. you get used to it. Did you notice that? Yeah. Like a little bit like weird. Mm -hmm. But the more I'm riding it, the more it's getting more That's comfortable. Stick centered. So now I'm going to switch to, I'm going to try mode two, which is faster. It's on eco and I'm going to do dual. So let me turn around. That was eco to turbo. When I got to the end, I switched to turbo and it definitely went faster. Let me put the highest speed, which is three. Here we go. is in insanely fast now I don't know about anti-lock brakes because that just slid right yeah so it says anti-lock brakes but it didn't slide that hard what you could try to do is go a little bit on off-road and slam on the brakes maybe slide. maybe there's just a little bit of slip like that that you're gonna get I'm gonna try it again let me try making one more adjustment here it's on turbo let me go to dual and see if it goes any faster that's the fastest setting I'll let you try that one <laughs> Takeoff speed is way slower when I put this to single. Actually, when I put it to dual. So I'm going to leave it on single turbo. How fast? I was doing about 36. 36, yeah. That's what I was doing. All right. Not too bad off road. The suspension's really good, I'll tell you that much. Good suspension.
Okay, so what is your opinion of the anti-lock brakes? Is it working partially, not working at all? I don't feel anything with the anti-lock brakes. It feels like it's not pulsating and it's willing to skid for enough time to where it's not worth having if it is doing anything. I noticed the same thing about that. There is no pulsation effect, it just kind of skids. It's possible there is another setting under that special menu for the braking system, but the only one I noticed was the level of regenerative braking and I didn't see anything about anti-lock braking. It is fast, it does go very close to 40, 36, 37. And did you notice anything else? I noticed that with the throttle, it won't work if you're pressing a brake and you click the throttle, which is nice because if you ever get to a yeah. panic situation and your finger's on the throttle, you're not gonna hit the brake and the gas you at the same that. time. So that's actually really good, that I like. With respect for single and dual, you want to take a quick look at that and you just want to see which one is how the wheels react to the sure. switch. Sure. You put it in single mode and you give it a little bit of gas, it'll just spin the rear wheel. All right, so the back is on the single and the button is what, out? The button is out. All right, when you click the button in and turn it to dual mode, you could lift up the front wheel and it's still giving some power to the rear, but more goes to the front. Granted, the front is off the ground. All right, so basically, probably once it gets going, then the back probably speeds up along with the front. Or it probably just sends a steady amount of power to both wheels and... Like assisting. Yeah. All right, so that's good. And the suspension, you have no problem with that either, right? Suspension thought... works well. And on the grass with all the ruts and little bumps, it felt great. Yep. So from one to 10, what would you give it? Give it an eight. That's what I would do, about an eight, eight and a half, which is pretty good. Yeah. I, don't, I very rarely give a 10 out. So eight and a half is pretty good. Yeah. All right, I hope you enjoyed this product review. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, and share. And remember, always be safe when you're riding. Thanks for watching.